I wish that there was a video like this when I was doing my degree because my god, I really needed it. So today's video is going to be all about how to study for biomedical sciences exams. So I guess I'm sort of making this video for my past self and for any of you guys who are in that current situation of having to study for your biomedical sciences degree. Now different biomed courses are obviously different and you'll be tested in different ways. But in my university, which was Newcastle, we had multiple choice questions for the first year and the first half of second year. And then the second half of second year and third year, we had essay based exams. So in this video specifically, I want to talk to you about multiple choice questions and how you can study for them and how you can get the highest grades. And in another video, which I will link below, I'm going to talk all about the essay sections of the examination process and how you can get those first grade marks, especially using further reading. So link to that below if you think you might benefit from that. Now, first things first, people get so excited when they hear that they have multiple choice questions because they think, oh, well, they're going to be super easy. And no, like they can sometimes be really difficult. Let me give you an example. You may be asked something along the lines of what is the function of P53 and be given six to eight different answer options. To answer a question like this, you firstly have to know the pathway or the broader subject that P53 belongs to. Now we know that P53 falls under the umbrella of genes and the cell. Potentially, if you get a nice exam question, the answers might relate to certain other topics, so things like microbiology or viruses. And if the person has no idea about P53, they might be inclined to pick one of those incorrect answers. But since you, you clever person, already know that P53 belongs to the umbrella of genes in the cell, then automatically you can rule out a few of the answers. But most of the time, because they want to make your life quite difficult, all of the answers will be gene based. So here are some tips to tackle these pesky multiple choice questions. Generally with learning anything, but specifically when it comes to these kind of exams, it always helps to learn the big picture first. For example, you could start by learning the pathway to which P53 belongs to and to kind of give you an overall, overall picture in that way. I think a really common but easy to make mistake is that a lot of people tend to make a keyword or a glossary of a bunch of words and their meanings and then try to memorize it. So for example, they might think, okay, P53, tumor suppressor gene, and that's what it'll say in their notes. But this is difficult, not only because there are literally hundreds of these little acronyms and little proteins and genes that you have to remember. For example, this is what the pathway looks like. So that in itself becomes really, really difficult to memorize, especially if you don't know where the words belong to in the context of the bigger picture. But also, if the question changes a little bit, so instead of saying, what is P53, they ask you, how does P53 suppress growth of tumors? Then you're kind of like, ah, drat. That kind of goes your answer. So first things first, try and learn the overall picture and pathway. And this is something that I've definitely found in my own studies and my own experiences, is that when you learn a pathway, and everything sort of interlinks with other things in your head, you kind of remember the specific things a lot better because they are in the context of something. Now, don't be overwhelmed because you will very rarely be asked to learn like the whole pathway and you would never be um, asked to kind of recreate the whole thing on, an, on your exams. But there are often times where you may be given a pathway with bits missing and you have to put in the right molecule, the right protein or the right thing in the blank space of the pathway, which as you can see, would probably be very difficult to answer if you have just learned a glossary. Number two, once you have got an overview of a topic, try and recall it. So this point kind of links to the point above and you might be asking the question, well, how do you memorize or how do you learn a big complex pathway like that? 
Something that helped me a lot personally was to begin by drawing out the pathway correctly and then sticking it on my wall and then I would cover it up and I would try and draw and recreate it from memory. So I might have a go on the first time and I might literally write down two things. But that's alright, I would write down the two things and if I couldn't think of anything else I would then have a look, give myself a few minutes to kind of process it just so you're not using your short-term memory alone and then I would have a second go at adding different information or new information to the little two pieces of information that I already have on the paper. And what I would do is I would do a, I would use a different colored pen. And by doing this over and over, you're essentially learning things in layers. So you might do this for a session and then leave it. And then the next day you might try it again. And what you'll find is that on your first attempts, when you first cover it up and write it, instead of two pieces of information, you might have five or you might have six. See, it's these little clever pathways in your brain that just get stronger with repetition. Number three is use acronyms. One of the most difficult things about biomedical sciences is that you have so many of these things like the MAP kinase 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 or the JAK pa pathway or the P10 or P53 and all of these things just kind of sound like gibberish. But if you find a way to make them into acronyms or turn them into fun things that you'll remember, then that will really help you out. Now I'm about to get nerdy here so bear with me but the way that I used to remember what P53 does is by comparing it to Hemdal from Thor. Hemdal was the guardian of Asgard and P53 is the guardian of the genome. And there you go, you will never ever forget what P53 is ever again. You're welcome! Number four is write down questions as you go through and read your notes. Assuming you already have your notes or your lecture slides, which by the way, if you don't, I really, really would not recommend reading and writing and rewriting them. But assuming you already have your notes with you, I think it's really important that when you have a read through, you write down the questions or you write down things that come to your head as you're reading it. A common mistake that people make, and this is something I used to do a lot myself when I was studying, is I would read through my notes and, for example, the first sentence might say, something something is this, and in my head I go, but why is it that? And then later on I would read it and the answer would be below, and I'd be like, oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So when you read the answer a bit further down, it's more you recognising that, oh, I've seen this before, as opposed to truly knowing and understanding it. So the next time you read your notes and you come across something and you're like, oh, but I wonder why that is. Write that down. Maybe that'll be a question that you get asked later on. Number five is test your recall. I'm not going to go into too much detail about this because I talk about this all the time in any of my revision videos, but the best way for you to get to remember the things you've learned is by practicing recalling and writing down and answering questions. And since you've already done the last point and picked a whole bunch of questions, you can just go through and try and answer them. Flashcards are also a really good idea, but I know that not everybody has the patience to make them, so even if you write down a bunch of questions on a piece of paper and then methodically go through and answer them, that works too. Number six is discuss in groups. Now I know that social learning isn't for everybody and some people tend to get more distracted when they work in groups. And I kind of fall into that category, I'm very much a solo learner, but now and again I do think a discussion of a small number of people, maybe two, maximum four, can be really really helpful in consolidating some of the information that you already know. It doesn't even necessarily have to be a question and answer session, I think even the process of just sitting and talking casually with a friend about some of the topics you've learned can itself help you remember. And you know what guys, I can't tell you the number of times that something is stuck in my head because a friend has made a joke or said something funny and come or come up with like a funny association that in my exam, when the question comes up, I think about that funny thing and I think about my friend saying it and there you go, I just got myself another mark. I really hope that these tips were useful to you and if you enjoyed this video, do give it a thumbs up and subscribe to stick around. And I will also link to a whole bunch of study videos down below. So go ahead and enjoy all the resources there. I hope you all have a wonderful day and until next time, take care and I'll see you later. Also best of luck if you've got exams coming up. Bye!